Good morning. It's Monday, May 6, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Spiritual Gift of Agitation, and our scriptures, Acts chapter 9. Afterward, he ate some food and regained his strength. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days, and immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is indeed the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed. Isn't this the same man who caused such devastation among Jesus' followers in Jerusalem, they asked? And didn't he come here to arrest them and take them in chains to the leading priests? Saul's preaching became more and more powerful, and the Jews in Damascus couldn't refute his proofs that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. After a while, some of the Jews plotted together to kill him. They were watching for him day and night at the city gates so they could murder him, but Saul was told about their plot. So during the night, some of the other believers lowered him in a large basket through an opening in a city wall. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they were all afraid of him. They did not believe he had truly become a believer. Then Barnabas brought him to the apostles and told them how Saul had seen the Lord on the way to Damascus and how the Lord had spoken to Saul. He also told them that Saul had preached boldly in the name of Jesus in Damascus. So Saul stayed with the apostles and went all around Jerusalem with them, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. He debated with some Greek-speaking Jews, but they tried to murder him. When the believers heard about this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him away to Tarsus, his hometown. The church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, and it became stronger as the believers lived in the fear of the Lord. And with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. Wherever Apostle Paul went, he started a riot or a revival. These words still ring in my ears since I first heard them 40 years ago from a friend in ministry. It seems every time Paul opened his mouth or his pen, what came forth was the spiritual gift of agitation. Now by that I mean Paul was prone to get right to the bone of truth, no matter what was in the way. If you had a soft exterior, he'd cut through that flesh like a surgeon. But if you're of the hard shell variety, Paul would leave your pride in pieces on the floor. Consider the evidence. From the very first we hear about Paul, he's heartily joining in the religious leader's decision to stone Stephen. Then, a meeting with Jesus on the road to Damascus leaves Paul blind, and he's turned 180 degrees toward eternal truth. His eyes are reopened, and then he begins preaching that truth from Damascus to Jerusalem with his life on the line. And every time he preaches, there's a riot or revival, oftentimes both, as a response to the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord. The chief piece of evidence that Paul's ministry was one of agitation driven by the Spirit of God is how every time Paul preached, people wanted him dead. I felt like that a few times. Added to that is the reality expressed by Luke in his text that once Paul was hurried out of town, the church experienced peace, but they were left with an insatiable desire to press forward for the sake of Christ's kingdom. In short, Great things happened. Now, there's a difference between just stirring it up, an agitating, self-important troublemaker, and someone cooperating with God's Spirit to unsettle those who are comfortable in their unbelief. There's an old saying that describes the task of any preacher, we are to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. Paul was a master of both. For you today... If you're comfortable in your routine, it may be time to have a little talk with Paul. That is, only if you don't mind a little truth shaking your comfort zone to the bone. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.